seven. So just a quick note before we start, I am not going to be using any API keys, um, meaning that the prices, the price data from this API comes from an endpoint with no authentication. So you don't need an API key to necessarily access it. And we're going to be using a few things here. We're going to be using the requests library in Python, because basically what we're going to do is just send the get request to this API link. And we're going to parse this JSON. So that's another library we need to, have, we need to import, which is JSON. Um, these libraries would have to be, of course, pip installed ahead of time. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the request. So I'm going to make a variable called response and set it to requests.get. And inside these parentheses, this is where you would put the link. Now, most of the Coinbase API links follow the same format. It's going to be HTTPS API. Oh, whoops, whoops. HTTPS um, API dot coinbase dot com slash v2 slash prices if you want to get price data and then what comes after this is what is known as a currency pair so it consists of a few things it consists of the cryptocurrency in question and then a hyphen and then the fiat currency in question so for example i want to see bitcoin and we're going to add a hyphen and then we're going to add us dollars because i want to see how right now how much bitcoin is worth in us dollars and then after that you specify what kind of price you want you can specify the buy the sell or the spot price i'm going to specify the spot price because that is generally what's seen on coinbase on its graph um this is not really the price that fluctuates a lot if you want that you would probably want more of the buy and sell price. So I'm going to show the spot price. And I'm going to convert this response into JSON. And this JSON method basically converts your JSON to a dictionary. But since I want to actually show you guys what this response looks like, I spelled it wrong here. I'm going to use the JSON method dumps so I can convert this dictionary object to a literal string and then print it out for you guys. All right, so I just ran our script and this is pretty much the result of what we just printed. So the response from the request gave us a dictionary consisting of a data object, which has within it, um, a base component, which we defined earlier, a currency component, which we also defined earlier, and this new piece of information that we just got, which is called the amount or price of the currency. And currently Bitcoin is at uh, $6,401. So now what I'm gonna do here is make this a little more interesting. I'm gonna actually just get the individual components from the data object and then just print them out. Um, so let's get currency, or first actually let's get rid of this print statement. We're not going to use that anymore. So I'm going to make a variable called currency. I'm going to set that to the data objects uh, base element. And I'm going to do something similar for the price. I'm going to get the data objects amount. And now I'm just going to print this out um, since I'm using the latest version of Python. So this is a pretty new feature um, with strings. So Python made this cool feature and I could probably make um, a video on it by itself on this. Um, so you can start a string literal now with just the letter F. And then you can put stuff inside it like a normal string like currency and uh, price and what this will print out is literally what you see currency and price but the cool thing now is we can actually insert the variables we defined earlier inside brackets so currency 
for the currency and then for price we're going to add the price and the cool thing about this is that it's not going to actually print out curly bracket currency curly bracket it's going to actually fetch our variable uh, that we defined earlier and print the value within that out and so what I want to do with this is I actually want to put this in a while loop with a delay of course because we don't want it spazzing out so I'm going to import a package called time and I'm going to just set this for now while true make it run forever indent it indent it and um, to prevent it from you know like running super quickly I'm going to add a little delay I'm going to add a five second delay by using the time not sleep function and yeah we're going to run this now and see how it goes so as we see we just ran it and we got the first price which is six thousand four hundred two dollars and as you can see it's now printing the price every five seconds and right now the price isn't fluctuating too much also we are using the coinbase api as you see there it just changed a little bit it uh, came up a little bit um, if we we're using the gdax api um, you would probably see more fluctuations since that's where day trading goes on but coinbase is for uh, usually for regular traders or less experienced traders so um, printing this out every five seconds you probably won't see major fluctuations but it's definitely interesting to see when it actually does change and again you can do this with again different currencies you know different cryptocurrencies and different um, fiat currencies so you could do like ethereum and Australian dollars if you wanted to but I decided to just do Bitcoin and US dollars as an example and this is pretty much all I had to show you guys it's pretty easy pretty bare bones to use this API just to get prices um, like I said you don't need an API key um, you pretty much just send a get request and just parse the data and you can check coinbasedevelopers.com for other um, types of data that they provide at their endpoints without any authentication so there's I know there's definitely more stuff and you should definitely check it out and yeah the price is fluctuating a little bit as you see and that is pretty much it